Hello, this is Ross with DragTheBar.com, and today I will be making a um, 200 no limit 6 max video. I just opened up a couple of tables, um, folded my big blind in the first hand on the table on the right, and uh, picked up ace ace in the small blind for my second hand. So, um, see if um, see what happens here if it gets opened ahead of me or not. Yeah, okay, um, the button opens here, so I'm just gonna definitely gonna three bet aces from the small blind. Feel like um, a lot of times when somebody makes a late position open, you're not gonna not gonna get as much respect with a three bet. So there's a good chance I'm gonna get action with these aces here. Check uh, ten jack on the table on the left. This guy limped, so flop an open ended straight draw. I'm just gonna bet out three dollars into a five dollar pot. Try to uh, build the pot. See if I can hit my hand. Okay, the turn's a queen, and um, I think I'm just gonna keep betting it. There's a there's a decent chance he can have a hand like you know similar to mine, like ten jack or ace jack or something like that. And he uh, calls pretty quickly, so um, don't know. I don't really have any reads on him, but uh, I think it's probably time to give up here on this uh, on this river. He's not going to be folding any any king or queen, anything like that. Yeah, he I'm sure he would have called a river bet with king seven. So um, he did um limp that under the gun or as under the gun plus one last hand. So I'm just gonna make a note on him. Limps king seven suited under the gun plus one six max. So um, you can already tell he's probably not a great player be just because he's limping, limping hands under the gun like that. So um be folding to his min raise with ace three and the uh, small blind there <clears throat> okay on the table on the left um, there's three bet in the big blind after the under the gun min raise continuation bet the flop a little more than half pot Checks the churn in the river. He's probably got a hand like ace king, ace queen. That uh pretty much missed. He tried to steal. No, he had tens. Right, I'm surprised that he uh that he didn't keep betting that churn. <clears throat> Just um remember remember how he played those tens for future spots to know that um that he can take a more passive passive post slop line with a, a pretty strong yet vulnerable hand for the board. I think there was a lot of straight draws there. It was like six, nine, ten or on the on the board. <clears throat> okay, I picked up ten eight suited here on the hand on the right. So uh, if it folds to me I'll be opening this one in the cutoff. Especially since we have a player um Southpaw seventy six here who uh seems to like play a lot of hands, probably not not a very good player, so um, that's going to be extra extra incentive for me to open a hand like this, just so I can be playing pots with him. All right, I'm going to be folding Jack Four here under the gun. Looks like we're playing only four-handed now too. These these guys both sat out. I get three bet here um, by the button player to my cutoff open with ten eight suit. I'm not going to play this hand here. I mean, he does he three bets pretty often. Uh, Six six point five percent, or yeah, six point five percent three. But I did forget to um to lay out my holding manager stats, which I always like to do at the beginning of the session. So um I'll just go over it um with my mouse here. Um this fifty eight here, that's his VPP. The seventeen is pre flop raise. One point three is his aggression factor. Zero is his three bet percentage. Zero is his fold to three bet percentage. And then um just the number of hands I have played with him is fifty one. So here I'll just be folding 7-3 suited under the gun plus one. I think both these tables are pretty good right now. Um, just because we have um, this guy who's uh, limping, limp calling a lot of hands, and then uh, this guy who also seems to be playing quite a few hands. All right, um, spect Spectrafax here opens uh, in the cutoff. So I only have seven hands on him, but... Um, I'm gonna call with ace eight suited in the uh in the big blind. I think I can play that hand profitably post flop against him against the cutoff. He's gonna be opening pretty wide on the cutoff, so 
Alright, he checks back the um, the ace high flop with a diamond flush draw. So I'm definitely going to bet this turn. Just make a standardish size bet for me, which is nine into a uh, a twelve dollar pot. Okay, he did, he check raises this flop. Um, I can't see doing anything besides calling here on the turn. I don't think he would check back a big hand on the flop. So basically, he's repping a pretty narrow range here of um, maybe a turn two pair with jack nine or something like that, maybe. So I'm just going to call that bet. And the river is a, a five, pretty much complete blank. So I'm just going to check to him. I'll be calling on this table on the right with deuces in the uh, in the big blind to the small blind open. And he bets um, 40, which is a little more than half pot here. So um, continue going with my read on the turn. I think I'm just going to um, gonna call him down this time, just because he is wrapping a pretty narrow, pretty narrow range with that churn check raise. I, I don't see him checking back the flop often with a big hand, so he's gonna have maybe jack nine, ace nine here if he has me beat. So I'm gonna call him down and see see what he has. All right, a set of jacks. I'm gonna flat here on the on the hand on the right with deuces in the uh in the big blind just because I think that I'm gonna be able to uh take the pot fairly often on the churn. Also have the best hand a lot some um a lot of the time too so um we'll see. Okay he decides to fire a second barrel. Um kinda puts me in a tough spot when he fires a second barrel here because um just because I'm, it's hard for me to raise here and rep rep much with a raise. So and at the same time, if I just call, there's going to be a lot of hands that give me like the a lot of cards that just give me like the nut low on the river. And I think I think it's just time, probably probably best just to fold deuces there to the uh, to the churn aggression. I'm going to put a note on this uh, Spectrafax guy on the table on the left that. Uh, Raises preflop with Jack Jack, checks back an ace. What was that like? An ace, ace Jack five diamond er, suit. And just put diamond diamond flop. Just to know that he will slow play after raising preflop, even on a dry board. And then I'll say raises. Um, he raised my uh, my churn lead from nine to thirty. Bet forty blank river okay here I uh, let out with uh, with tens on this and uh, this player who limped the button min raise so I'm just gonna call see if I can hit hit something on the churn if not probably give up he's giving me good odds so you know if I can churn a club a 10 or a 2 I'm definitely gonna continue try to possibly win a big pot from him but uh, that, that queen's not a good card for me on the churn so I'm just gonna check fold that one <clears throat> I picked up king five here in the small blind under the gun player limps. I'm just going to be folding king five here as well as three eight offsuit here on the table on the right. Five six suited here. Um, in the cutoff, I'll be folding that one. And the table on the right, I uh, picked up four ten off, so definitely be folding that. <clears throat> Ace queen off suit on the table on the left. We will um, definitely be playing this hand. Okay, open this one in the cutoff. Got called by um, this player in the small blind. He's playing a ton of hands. Fold deuce nine on the table on the right. I'm going to continuation bet this flop just because I have the best hand a lot of the time with ace queen. And uh, also going to just be able to take it down. Don't want to give him um, a free draw with, you know, with any any type of hand that I have beat. I think that's a good, good flop to continuation bet. 
It's pretty dry board. It's not going to hit him that often either. Ace King under the gun on the table to the left. I'll definitely be opening this hand. And it folds to the big blind, and I take that one down. Be checking three four offsuit in the big blind here. Flopped a gut shot. Not going to be betting this one though. He overbets the pot, the uh, the under the gun limper, so definitely just be check folding there. Table on the right, we have um, a dead post at two dollars. So, you know, even though the big blind does play a lot of hands, and you know that, that's gonna make it harder for me to steal, I still think it's it's a good button open here. I'm gonna open to four times instead of three times my normal, just because there's a dead two dollars out there to take that down. Okay, uh, the button opens here. Got Jack Queen offsuit, and uh, normally I wouldn't call call with Jack Queen offsuit, but um, I think with the limper here and the big blind, I'm gonna be able to play this hand profitably, just because he's gonna call so often or make a little mini re-raise like that, which um, for a player like him, it's probably probably a big hand like aces or kings. So um, as long as uh, the original Oprah doesn't. All right, yeah, he four bet, so definitely just gonna fold that. <coughs> Can't imagine this guy folding. They never do after the min re raise. He raises back to seventy two, and all in. We'll see what they have. Oh, he doesn't have the uh, the show card option on. All right, I'm gonna continuation bet this flop. Where I opened under the gun, the king queen got called in the small blind, and uh, he folds. His range is is probably a little bit tight there, just because I opened under the gun, and he's he seems to play pretty pretty tight pre flop, but um, still think it's okay to continuation bet that flop because he's gonna maybe have like a hand like ace jack there, maybe a smaller pocket pair even he'll be folding against my under the gun raise there just because um cuz my range is also pretty tight there so i think that's uh that's a decent flop to continuation bet even though his range is going to be tight only playing um 16% of hands be folding jack too suited here in the big blind and um i'm going to check out what um i saw that he had aces so i'm going to put a note on him that he limp min re raises after a caller with ace ace under the gun pre flop just so we know that um when he does that in the future that's probably the hand he has king two offsuit i'm not going to be opening this against uh this player is playing playing a fair amount of hands pre flop so um not going to be able to take take that one down with a uh, a small blind open there as often as i think i would need to to, to play king two profitably in that spot, so um, I'm gonna imagine that uh, in that that last hand in the table on the left, that uh, this GSK guy had had probably kings there to uh, to stack off. So I'm just gonna check checking the hand history here, and he actually had ace king offsuit. So um, I mean, normally that would be a cooler, but I think against um, Against a player going like that, it might be, might have been a little bit, a um, little bit too, too loose of a stack off there with a with Ace King against this guy who's um, who limp min re raise just because whenever donks do that, unless they're doing it a lot, and that was the first time he did it in the, over the course of like 20 hands, the they usually have a, a really big hand when they do that. I opened uh, ace queen offsuit in the small blind here to seven, which is my normal amount when we're playing 100 big blinds, and I flopped two pair. 
on an ace queen king flop and I'm just going to continuation bet the flop and he floats the flop so um, turn is an offsuit six I'm going to bet again just bet 21 here into uh, $30 which is just about two thirds of the pot a little over two thirds and I am able to take that one down with ace queen so um, I think that um, his range there for flowing the flop is probably probably a lot of uh, gut shots, maybe some pair and gut shot type hands that he uh, did not decide to call my um, my churn barrel with. <clears throat> okay, on the table on the right, I uh, picked up six seven offsuit. The small blind won't be playing this one. I'm just going to fold to uh, the under the gun raise. I'm going to sit an empty table and just leave it leave it off the screen for now. And if I get somebody to join that table, I'll probably um, bring that one onto, uh, onto the display screen here and then um, close out this one just because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of action on uh, the table on the right at the moment. table on the left is still good because we have this um, the player who just doubled up with um, with the aces, Limpman re-raising. <clears throat> All right, I picked up three four suited on the table on the right. The uh, under the gun player posted, so if it uh, folds around to me, I'm going to be opening this one two four times, like I did last time with uh, the king four off suit hand, just because um, there's extra money to take out. I do have the button, so. I think it's definitely gonna be a profitable spot to uh to open if I'm if somebody doesn't open ahead of me. Open uh, I'm opening uh, on the table on the left. Open king nine suited in the cutoff, and I uh, get called by a player in the small blind who's playing just about every hand. Flop is uh, ace two two, and he leads out at me for a small bet of four dollars into thirteen and. I think he would do that with with a lot of hands, even hands that I beat. So um, just trying to take it down. I'm just gonna call that bet. Here I flopped um, three, four, five. Yeah, I didn't really flop anything. Gut shot to the sucker straight. And that board, I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna be able to take it down a whole lot with a bet. So I'm just gonna check it back. Actually churned a double gutter along with a flush draw. So while I don't think I'm gonna be folding any aces here, I think I still have enough fold equity to make a bet of like fifteen dollars here into the twenty four. Plus I always have outs if called, and I take that one down pretty quick. Here, um with the King Nine suit, I'm kinda of running out of time. I'm just gonna gonna call again though. Picked up a flush draw, plus my king high is um is very often good there. Eight on the river and um to be honest, the eight might have hit him, the jack might have hit him, and I just, I think, I think I, sh I am good here a decent amount of time, but I also think I can fold hands that he's going to. Okay, never mind. That was exactly uh, the kind of hand that I was hoping to fold with my uh, with my river bet there, but it did not work out. He called me with fours, so I'm just going to be folding eight nine, and I folded um, queen ten to uh, the three bed here. I'm just gonna make another note on this guy to say that he never folds and don't bluff because um, I think the call with fours there was um, was probably it was pretty terrible. I was actually thinking that I could fold an eight there maybe even a jack against this guy. I knew that I knew that he's not going to be folding a lot of hands, but I definitely didn't expect him to be calling with fours. <clears throat> okay, ten king offsuit under the gun here. I'm I'm not going to be opening that one. Table on the right, queen seven offsuit, not going to open that one either.
All right, I picked up uh, eight five offsuit table on the right. Won't be opening that one. <clears throat> five six suited table on the left, and uh, we have an under the gun open, so I'm not going to be playing this one either. Don't uh don't feel that that uh, hand like five six suited. Although it's a suited connector, just it's not going to play well against an under the gun opening range out of position. You know, if I'm on the button there and there's a fish calling before me or say a fish in the blinds who's likely to call there's a good chance I would play that hand but um definitely not going to play it in the big blind after after <clears throat> under the gun open here I'm going to just uh 3 bet 7 10 suited I haven't 3 bet yet at this table so um I'm going to try to establish a decently aggressive I always like to try to establish a, an aggressive pre-flop image <coughs> feel that that uh, works pretty well with my game. Here, 8-3 offsuit, going to fold that one. Be opening 5-7 five, five, suited on the button here. And uh, get min re-raised by uh, the big blind. So, second time he's done it, and we're just about 30 hands. So I'm going to figure that he probably has a big hand here again. Maybe aces, kings, possibly ace, king, ace, queen type hands. Flat bottom pair on, um, be opening sixes here on the right. Flat bottom pair, and he bets about a third of the pot. And I think I think just because the bet is so small that I'm gonna have to have to call him there and see a churn card. He checks the churn, so um, at this point I think that he pretty much has has probably missed this flop with like ace queen or ace king. So I'm gonna bet the flop or bet the churn little more than half the pot and I'm able to take it down. Here we have a half stack who made a real small re-raise over my under the gun open so I'm gonna call the uh, the extra six dollars and just see if I can flop a set. He bets huge on the flop. Almost um, it's like pot and a half there so I'm not gonna be uh, definitely not gonna wasn't gonna stack off on that flop without hitting a set pretty much but uh, I think I had had the ads to set mine there it was only an extra six dollars he's playing a little over a hundred and I already have six dollars invested so uh, I'll be a folding um, 8-4 offsuit here to uh, the under the gun open five-handed Folding here on um, Jack Five offsuit in the small blind. Be folding eight four here. Oh, be opening uh, sixes under the gun table on the left. And I am called in two spots. One by uh, the fish who's playing every hand, and then again in the big blind. So. Flop pot is 18. We're gonna bet 13 with uh, my over pair to the 225 flop, and uh, we'll see. We'll see if we get action from either of the players. The uh, fishy player folds, and uh, see what uh, GSK does. He folds as well, so I was able to take that one down with sixes. <coughs> Min raised here on uh, the table of the right. I actually just picked up action on um on my um on the table that I opened that I was sitting alone at. So, I'm going to be bringing that one up pretty soon as soon as um I'm able to sit out on the table on the right. So, um I'm gonna call with fours here to uh to the open in the small blind. And he bets six, which is half pot. I'm gonna float this flop here with uh fours. Charm brings another king, so uh, I'm pretty much playing playing the board. And he checks, so I'm gonna make make a bet of twelve dollars, just about half the pot here, and uh hope to take that one down a decent amount of the time. Alright, he calls. And the river is another ace, and he checks to me again. Um, 
I'm going to bet over bet the pot here and um cuz I just don't think he has an ace there ever. And uh think I can take it down a lot. And uh king no longer plays. So basically he'd just be calling for a split with with pretty much anything unless he check called that turn with an ace, which I don't think he does very often. So I think an over bet there is good. I bet um bet $68 into uh 46 and was able to take it down take down uh the split pot. Okay. Oh, I didn't unauto auto post my blind on the table on the right. Um forgot to do that. But um at least nothing interesting has happened heads up so far. We're just pretty much uh trading blinds. I think we saw maybe two flops so far. opened here. I have king six offsuit and small blind won't be playing that one. Okay, um, picked up uh, ace three off or ace three suited here on the table on the right, and definitely be opening this one if uh, if it folds to me. All right, it's limped on the button. This is um, a spot where I think I think it's okay to open. It's also okay to fold. Um, the guys plan plan. Um, you know, I I wouldn't even mind limping here, but. Um, I think I'm gonna ISO, ISO raise this one. Less motivation to ISO raise when the player's not playing a full stack, but um, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, with raising, folding, or um, or just limping there on the button. And uh, I get three bet by fairly aggressive uh, aggressive player, but I just don't don't feel he's gonna be doing that light that often with um, with a shorter stack there, so. Just going to um, gonna fold his to his big three bet there. I'm gonna ISO again here with uh, with Ace Nine suited. It's definitely a little better hand to do it with than uh, than Ace Three. It's just gonna make um, more top pair type hands, hands that I can continue with a little more often. Was able to take that one down and. Um, Make sure to have the blind unposted so that uh, I can bring up my other table once that one gets around. Here I'm going to be folding jack 7 suited in the, the big blind to uh, the 3 bet. Okay, fold that one and I'm going to take that one off of the screen right now and then here let me resize this one so that it it fits and picked up ace jack here and I'm going to three bet this one to uh to the button open and picked up that pot. So um he opens again. I'm going to fold 95 here in uh in the in the small blind be folding 96 here in the small blind as well. King nine on the button folds to me. I'm going to be opening this hand. This guy um, has played nine hands, and when he's been when he's been entering pots, he's been limping. So I think that is going to be B 
be a pretty good table for me here. The one on the right. 9-7 offsuit won't be opening that one uh, in the cutoff. 6-2 suited here on the button. Won't be opening that one either. Eight two in uh, the big blind. Be folding that to the button open. Do say it's suited. Won't be playing that one in the small blind. <clears throat> Picked up a uh, queen ten offsuit in the button. Be opening that hand. And I get called by the big blind who checks to me. I'm going to bet um, $9 into 12 on uh, the Jack-Jack 5 flop here. And he calls. There's a turn as an ace. So I um, think that uh, when he floats that flop that he's going to be doing it with an ace often, hoping that ace high is good. So um, I don't think that that is a great turn to... Uh, to be uh, barreling and he fires a river. I think I'm just gonna fold here. He could have a jack, he could have an ace. Um, I'm gonna call here on the table on the left with king queen suited here. I wouldn't normally call with that hand to an under the gun open but um, with this player almost certain to enter the pot I think it's it's okay to play that hand just um, as long as we're not stacking off on the wrong boards against the under the gun open. Just basically um, king queen can make can make us some big hands that uh, will allow us to stack this player here. Okay, um, two checks to me. I'm surprised the uh, the opener didn't bet, but I'm going to make a bet here um, just to try to take it down. This is most likely just going to be a one street bluff. Bet uh, 17 into what is it like a 20 27 dollar pot. See if I can take that one down. I'm going to three bet here on the table to uh, table on the right with uh, Jack Queen suited to uh, to see if I can take that one down and uh, he calls so I'm gonna bet 25 into uh, 40 which is just over half the pot here and he floats um, turn is another 8 so I'm going to uh, gonna be checking here and um, Okay, I got check raised here, which seems very odd. Um, very strange line for him to take with an actual hand. So I'm just gonna just gonna float that one, and um, turn is a seven of clubs, and he uh, checks to me, which I expected him to do um, very often on that turn. And I'm just gonna make a small smallish bet here of uh, forty. Got to do it quick before my time runs out. And um, I expect him to fold here um, very often to that uh, to that turn bet. <clears throat> okay, I've been uh, betting this hand here on the right. Uh, bet the flop, barreled the turn, and I'm gonna bet the river pretty big, about 64, and uh, hope to get hope to get a. Uh, a call out of him, maybe a light call, just because uh, I think I almost always have the best hand there with the line he took, check call, check call, <clears throat> and then check the river, I don't think he shows up with uh, with a straight or a set there very often, so just just betting there for value, pretty big to try to make it look like a bluff, um, maybe get called up kind of light there by, by you know a hand like ace jack or something. <laughs> All right, here on the hand on the left, I'll be folding uh, king four in the uh, in the big blind. Um, try to try to talk a little bit about um, about more about my thought process in the uh, in the hand that just happened here. If I remember correctly, the player who check raised the flop was actually the pre-flop raiser. I'm going to open queen seven here, suited in the small blind. Um, It'll take that one down. He was actually the pre-flop raiser, so 
flap came down ace ace nine suited with two two um clubs i believe and he checked the flop he was i think second to act um the un the the big blind checked and then he uh he checked as well i bet the fish folded the big blind folded and then he made a check raise from 17 to 44 now when he made that check raise what i was thinking was okay what what kind of hand would he play like this especially on a draw board a board with a couple of clubs you know i think it was ace ace nine with two clubs so he's not gonna i i i can't really ever give him credit for an ace there but just because I would think he would almost always lead with an ace on that board and um, especially um, I I think I'll, um, all right, I'm just gonna call with ace seven here play this hand out and see if I can um, have any more to add about that hand he bets eight here into a nine ten ten flop so um, I'm gonna call here with a seven just because I have the best hand here pretty often. So just going to um alright, he double barrels here, eighteen into twenty six. And uh I am going to uh gonna call that. Almost ran out of time. I'm gonna call here with King Queen in the big blind against uh the cutoff open. and he checks it back and I'm gonna bet this bet this churn and here with my aces I'm gonna bet 28 here with my uh, churned aces just a value bet there it's a weird line for him to take on the table on the right but I'm um, out of position so I'm just gonna fold that one bet here I'm um, just under half pot and I got called by Ace Nine, which uh, which was actually a split. So um, not getting value from a whole lot of hands there, but um, just because you know, I mean, he could even have a hand like Ace Jack, and then I'm just just betting, betting, uh, throwing money away on the bet. But um, I mean, I guess I can get value from Jacks Queen. Maybe maybe if he's uh, got a nine and he's real stubborn, he'd call with that too. But um, I don't know. I just think it's always better to be betting in spots where you, even if it's a spot where you think that you almost always have the best hand, yet at the same time there's not much value at all to be had in the hand. I still think that it's better just to bet, just just to give yourself an overall more aggressive image and to um as well as not let them see what hand that you have in that spot i don't want him to know that i'm floating a7 on that flap in position even though you know it's a it's a fairly standard play almost all um all um players at one two will um will will float that flop with with a high in position but um at the same time i just if I don't have to let him know that I'm calling there with with a seven, I don't want to. So I'm just gonna make a bet and uh, try to um, make it so I don't have to show him my cards. We'll get you in uh, in tougher spots once in a while, but I still think overall it's better better play to bet in those spots where you have the best hand, but you don't think that you're gonna get called by often because um, you start making those plays a little more often you'd be surprised what you what you start getting looked up with they'll start you know think that you're uh, full of it every hand start looking you up really light so um i sat on another empty empty table trying to uh see if somebody will sit with me um and if somebody does sit i'm probably going to uh close the table that i have open on the left here um just because everybody at the left um table now seems to be a a regular player for the limit. They all have pretty reasonable pre-flop stats. Uh, 
Okay. Um, there was one hand that I was not able to um, to talk about that I'm going to try to... Um, you may have seen it. I didn't even notice it happen because I think I was um, a little more concentrated on the on the le left table. But um, the hand right before the queen king, where I um, turned top pair, rivered top two, I won a pot with queen high on a um, six six eight flop, a continuation bet. He floated. Turn was at eight. I checked. He checked behind. River was a four. I checked. He checked behind. He actually ended up having pocket fives there. So he was playing the board there pretty much. He um he pretty much wasn't beating anything. Um. So I mean, I guess I can make a note on him that uh that he doesn't doesn't like to bluff in three bet pots and um I mean that note isn't even really gonna tell me specifically why I said that but um I guess that's that's a that's a decent note to put on him just to know that um I I think almost almost all players there would either bet the churn with those fives or at least bet the river just because he has no other way to win that pot. I mean he maybe he thinks I'm gonna call him down with ace high which you know is is a possibility I might do that if I had ace high but um I really think he should be betting that that churn or river to try to get to me to fold hands like uh like queen high like like I did have in that spot so um maybe he just weighted my range so so heavily towards high pairs and um ace high that's going to make a hero call that he didn't feel like betting that river was was a good Bet. I'll be opening ace king here um, on the table on the left under the gun. <clears throat> Make a note on uh, this GSK guy that um, that he raised pre-flop and uh, check raise ace ace nine suited suited into uh, what was that? It was like a four-way into three other players check fold turn all right I picked up ace two here in uh in the small blind be folding that to the button raise of uh g s k four five here on the table on the right be folding that one and then folding queen four here on the button as well King four suited, I think I can open this one in the cutoff. Play this hand. A few hands ago, um, where I had fours, it was in the small blind, and uh this D Weiss guy who I, I do recognize, I have played some hands with him. He's uh always plays a half stack and uh didn't call with the fours there just because I'm never gonna be able to uh to play that hand profitably in that spot. <clears throat> against him just because of the fact that he's um, only playing 50 big blinds. Small pairs aren't going to play well at all versus him out of position. Um, here I have ace-10 suited and I'm just going to fold this to his big uh, to, to his big three bet. I think that's a spot where um, where playing the half stack has, has a pretty big advantage over over the small stack, especially if you have a player that's unaware, you know, of of the half stack, he can make those those three bets and and take them down. Um, you know, it, it whenever you have a player with he has high three bet, I'm gonna be folding ace jack here to the to the to the three bet. There, he doesn't three bet uh, all that often at all, so oh, folding ace jack suited there is fine. Um, yeah, but um. Any time that you have a, a, a pretty competent, um, say, 50 big blind stack who knows what he's doing playing that, that kind of stack is playing pretty aggressively pre-flop, you want to be much less, um, you want to call raises tighter if he's yet to act in the hand because he doesn't have to risk as much, you know, when he three bets 
um, he's not he's not you know putting a, a, a full stack um, at risk you know when he's when he's making plays pre-flop so um, it's much easier I think for a player like that to three bet a little bit lighter and not get shoved on just like just like the um, the ace ten suited hand that's a hand ace ten suited where if he was playing a hundred big blinds or more and um, if he was playing a hundred big blinds or more I would definitely at least consider taking that flop in position given his aggressive three bet stats but the fact that he's only playing fifty big blinds and I'd be putting in more than twenty five percent of effective stacks with um, by calling there it just it just puts me in a tough spot where I really can't call I don't think shoving is good especially given the fact that there's a player playing 150 big blinds effective who called my raise I mean the chances that he would call a shove there aren't likely but you know there are players who can flat you know capable flatting aces or kings pre-flop so I definitely don't wanna don't want to make you know maybe an, a shove with ace 10 there because I think he's full of it and then end up getting called for my full 150 big blinds by a guy who slow played aces or kings preflop so um, yeah I guess that's just um, just a little something I wanted to say about playing against uh, playing against 50 big blind stacks um, I did get action a little bit of action on um, on the table that I opened just um, just uh, had it actually filled really fast. Have a full table there, but um, actually have a good player here at the the table on the right. So um, probably um, see how things how things go on both tables and um, figure out which one that I'd like to keep open. Open fives here under the gun got called by um by uh Spetrifax and I'm just going to continuation bet the king high flop and I'm able to take that one down <clears throat> okay I pick up a 6-4 offsuit here in the big blind and um I'm going to be folding this one to uh to the 50 big blind opener Picked up tens here in the small blind, so uh see what happens here. It's opened uh by GSK, so tens here, um I think that um it it it's okay to three bet, but at the same time by three betting, if I'm gonna play a hand against him there, it's um it's gonna put me in a spot where um where I'm only playing against the portion of his range that is uh that is stronger than tens. So I'm just gonna flat in the small blind to uh his button open. And it gets a uh, three bet there by the big blind. So um even though it's gonna put me in a tough spot in um I'm gonna open uh kings here, make it ten, the guy limped. You know, it's put me in a tough spot out of position against this player on a lot of flops. And I'm gonna call the twenty just because my hand is is under wrapped. He doesn't three bet a whole lot, but I don't have a ton of hands on him, so um I think that that is uh that's fine. Alright, here I flop top set and I'm just gonna lead out a little more than half pot here just because um I think that um, if he has a hand like eights or nines, you know, even sevens or something there, that he's going to check behind the flop, and I don't want to uh, don't want to give him the opportunity to check behind the flop on a hand that he's going to um, going to call down with. Now he folded, so um, I I didn't make much on the hand <laughs> hand at all actually. Um, must have sniffed out that I had a set, but I find if you do that, a lot of times players will make the big flop raise there and if he has an over pair he's almost always gonna gonna make a raise and stack off even if he has a hand like ace king king queen 
a lot of times he's like, oh, you know, what what's he really repping by leading? You know, I, I can probably make him fold with uh, with a a raise. And at the same time, by betting 26 there on the flop, I'm se I'm I'm perfect setting it up to get stacks. And by betting the churn and river, I can even bet bet the churn a little bit smaller. You know, probably around maybe 65, and then it's gonna make it a real easy river shove for uh, less than the size of the pot so um <clears throat> yeah that's why why I did decide to lead there's nothing wrong with checking if I check that flock flop I can almost always get a bet out of him but um I think overall I like a lead there better just because um I'm gonna be able to get I don't want to give him the opportunity there to control the size of the pot if he has a hand that wants to um that wants to check back the flop because if the flop gets checked back I got almost no chance of getting stacks in there but by betting the flop half pot you know a little more than half pot I can easily get stacks in by the river <clears throat> in that spot all right I'm opening ace jack here um under the gun and then I also opened it here on the button continuation betting nine into uh the king six two real dry flop and uh, he check calls so I think he can have anything there from um, maybe a weaker king like king 10 king jack to um, a pocket pair you know like sevens or eights or so rivers another king so um, he checks and uh, the fact that he checked just makes me think that um, that he probably has me beat he's probably got a hand that he's trying to get the showdown if he did have you know a weak ace he'd probably all right he had sixes so he, he slow played the flop and um, all right I have aces here and uh, definitely gonna three bet this one make it 20 from 6 to 20 make a note on this guy that uh, call my um, button open in the small blind 6-6 six, six, check call what was that? Uh, picked up kings here, and um, I'm gonna open that one. You know what? I just realized that I'm talking about a hand that <laughs> that happened on a table that I don't even have on the screen. So never mind. Never mind what I was just saying. I'm not gonna explain that since uh, you didn't even see the hand happen. That was the that was the table where I um, got some action heads up and. Uh, don't know why I thought that that was on the screen for some reason. Just ignore what I was uh, what I was just saying. Here I'm going to continuation bet the kings and open um, ace jack on the button. And uh, he check calls the flop, the 10-3-3 uh, flop. And uh, there's 32 in the pot on the turn. I'm going to bet 24. Got min re raised here by the the small blind, and cold called by this player. So I am going to uh, to play with uh, ace jack there and I actually flopped a very good hand uh, trip aces so I was able to take this hand down with the double barrel Maureen floated me in position folded to the churn barrel and uh, fold kings there here I'm just gonna make a smallish bet with uh, just about half the pot with ace jack here this player on uh, min re-raised so and he checks the flop and uh, they both actually just fold to my half pot bet so uh, I'm surprised the player who min raised preflop did fold there a lot of times. You know, he's going to have, you know, ace king, ace queen there and be like, "Oh, I'm going to be tricky and uh and check raise the flop even after min raising preflop or else they're going to have a hand like kings or queens, which is the hand I was hoping that he had and they're going to stack off with it just cuz they're not going to believe I have the ace or just because they don't want to fold it. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna play um, play through one more round and then um, close up my tables here. Call it a, call it a session. <clears throat> I think I did get into some uh, pretty interesting spots here in this session, so um, I hope um, I hope I explained it well and uh, you were able to learn from uh, some of the spots that I got into here this session. Um, I picked up Ace Five here on the button. I'll be opening that one. And uh, pick was able to to steal the blinds there. 
King-10 here. Folds to me, I'm going to be opening this one as well in the cutoff. Been playing pretty aggressive pre-flop at, uh, at both tables. I don't know if that's just because I'm getting a lot of hands or um, if I'm opening a little lighter. But um, playing uh, about 27-23 here and about 32-25 here. So um, pretty aggressive on both tables. What's my note on this guy? All right, that's the only note I have is that one hand we played. Um, I'm going to continuation bet this flop. I feel I'm going to get floated a lot, but... Um, yeah, he did he did call the flop. Um I think I'm probably just gonna check and give up at this point. It's probably not one of the best flops to continuation bet, but um he checks it back, so I'm gonna make make a value bet here on this river. I hit my ten and um he calls snap calls pretty pretty quickly and I'm able to take it down. Pick up King's here I'm, I think I've opened like the last three hands at this table. Been getting a lot of hands, and I picked up fours here. This will be my last hand on the table on the right. Let's see what he uh, what he did end up calling me down with. Okay, he called me with ace queen. Um, in this hand where I just value bet my uh, my rivered pair of tens. So um, get three bet here with um, with my fours. I'm not going to be playing this one to the three bet definitely not getting odds to set mine and um, I think doing anything besides folding in that spot is pretty spewy so folds around and I'm actually sitting out on both tables now so I'm going to uh, gonna end the session I'm just gonna look at one more thing okay yeah I'm gonna end the session now I will um, bring up my hold'em manager here and go to uh, the cash games and then the graphs part and then just make a filter for uh, the last two hours of play and um, here we go try to fit this right in the little little recording box here and it's gonna be a little it's gonna look a little bit different just because <laughs> because I stretched it out. But uh, here's my graph for the session. It appears that I played 217 hands and I started out down about 133 was my lowest point and then I ended actually ended the session making $87. So um, click the display my all in EV and it's exactly the same because I didn't, didn't get any hands all in uh, before the flop at all or um or before the river there really was no all ins and um click my showdown so i was able to make make money um in the non showdown pots in this session but i uh, i did lose money at showdown it's usually the opposite for me i'm usually um usually most of my winnings come from uh come from the showdown pots but uh it's a small sample um yeah, so uh, that was my session. I hope um, hope you enjoyed the video. This was uh, Ross, a.k.a. Milwaukee2 uh, for DragTheBar.com. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.